Hello and welcome to Thomas Eginus' Introduction to Sanskrit, Lesson 4b, in which we go through the exercises at pages 36 to 39, and we'll finally run through the summary sheet on page 40. Firstly, we'll do the sentences in paragraph 4 on page 36. Let me share my screen with you. There we are. I will read them out first without Santhi, and then I will write them without Santhi, then I shall read them with Santhi, and then write them with Santhi. And explain I'll explain the Santhi as we go along. So four A Oops, my screen's gone funny here. Sorry, a technical glitch there. I don't know how to deal with that one. So, without Santi, for a Narah Mirgam Smaranti. Write it Narah Mirgam. Smaranti. So Nara, that's the nominative plural, the men, Smaranti, remember, Mrigam, the deer, the oops, the men remember the deer. Now let us apply Sandhi. We have a long R followed by Visarga, and at the end of Narah, and the next word begins with a voiced consonant, therefore that just becomes Nara Mrigam. So that means that we delete the Visarga, Nara uh, Mrigam, this um followed by, it's the final M, followed by a consonant, therefore it becomes the Anuswara, what we call the subdotted M. That becomes Nara Mrigam Smaranti. Let the men remember the deer. B. Rama Ashvau Gachati. Rama Ashvau Gachati. Rama Ashbau Gachati. So Gachati he goes. Rama Gachati. Rama goes. Ashvau. This is obviously here. The, the goes to. It is the accusative here. Remember in the dual, Ashvau the nominative and the accusative always have the same form. So, Rama Ashvau Gachati. Applying Sandhi, this becomes, we have A ah followed by the short A ah Visarga, and the next word begins with a short A, ah. so what happens is, you have Ramo, and the first A ah drops out, So it becomes Ramo Shvau. Ramo Shvau Gachati, and the Gachati remains unchanged. Ramo Shvau Gachati. Rama goes to the two horses. C. Kutra Gaja Vasanti. Kutra Gaja Vasanti. Kutra. Gaja Vasanti Kutra where Gaja elephants Vasanti live. That means where do the elephants live? You could equally correctly say Gaja Kutra Vasanti Kutra Gaja Vasanti Gaja Kutra Vasanti they're both e equally correct. Now to apply the Sandhi 
we have got kutra, word ending in a vowel, next word beginning in a consonant, no sandhi change. Here we have the long ah, followed by gajah, followed by vasanti, voiced, oops, sorry, voiced consonant, and so just the, the visarga drops out. Sorry, it's jumping all over the place. The visarga drops out. So it's just kutra gaja vasanti. Sentence D. Narau ramam vadata. Narau ramam vadata. So vadata, narau is the two men, that's the dual, and vadata with that characteristically uh, third person dual ending, the written as a ta sub dotted h in transliteration. So narau ra, the, the men speak or the men say something. So narau ramam vadata, the men speak to Rama. And just as you can have an accusative of motion, I am going to the horse. Ashvam gachami, put the horse in the accusative. So equally speaking to somebody, that can take the accusative. It can also take the dative, which we will uh, come to a little bit later. But here it's also correct to use the accusative. Sungnarau ramam vadata. So I'll write it without... Santi Ramam Badata Badata. The only change here to be made for Santi is that this final M followed by a consonant becomes a sub dotted M there. Narau Ramam Badata. And of course, no Santi for the Narau and Ramam. Ending in a vowel, next word begins with a consonant. Sentence E. Putra smarati prichativa. Putra smarati prichativa. Which means the, the son, putra smarati, remembers or asks. Write it without sandhi. Putra Smarati Prichativa Remember the, the va coming after the word to which it relates. So or asks Prichativa. That means the son remembers or asks. Sandhi no sandhi necessary in this sentence because we get the ah, the visarga, followed by an unvoiced consonant, an s. So there's no change. And for the other words, ending in a vowel, next word begins in a consonant, no change necessary. Sentence f. Rama mrigang. Gachati Rama Mrigam Gachati. So Rama in the nominative, so the subject of the sentence, Gachati goes, Rama Gachati goes where? Here, Mrigam, the deer, in the accusative, therefore goes to the deer. So Rama Mrigam Gachati. Rama Mrigam Gachati. The Sandhi. Ah, before a voiced consonant, M, was becomes O. So that's Ramo. Mrigam, the M before a consonant, therefore it becomes subdotted M. Ramo Mrigam. Gachati and change Ramo Marigangachati. 
uh, sentence G at the top of page 37. Ashvaunavadata. Ashvaunavadata. Which means that the, the two horses do not speak or are not speaking. Ashvau, the Ashva singular, Ashvau dual, na, not sorry, na, vadata, that's vad, and the dual third person dual ending, vadata, Ashvau na vadata, and in this sentence there is no sandhi. In both cases, it's uh, the words ending in a consonant, uh, ending in sorry, a vowel. And the next one's beginning with a consonant. And sentence H. Rama putram vadati. Rama putram vadati. That is, Rama is speaking to the sun. Yeah. Putram vadati. With Sandhi, Rama, it's an ah followed by a voiced consonant in the ka varga or the pa varga, it remains unchanged. Rama putram vadati. Putram vadati, you get the m followed by a consonant, so it becomes sub dotted, becomes the anuswara. And the difference in writing that in Devanagari, you, you write putram on its own, it would be like that. But putram vadati, it gets written like that. Putram vadati. Now we start on the Sanskrit, the English to Sanskrit in the paragraph 5 on page 37. So the men speak to the deer. And of course, because in English deer is the same in singular and plural, it's told we should treat it as one deer in the text. So the men speak to the deer, singular deer. So we have First of all, we'll do it without sandhi and then apply sandhi. So, singular nara, plural nara. Nara. And then marigam. So, vad, uh, vadanti, they speak to, to the deer. So, the men to the deer speak. It's going to be the marigam. in the accusative, speaking to, and vadanti, now to apply sandhi here, we have the a, the long a followed by visarga, followed by a voiced consonant, therefore the visarga goes, Nara Mrigum Vadanti. And as usual, final M becomes Anuswara, which we transliterate as subdotted M before the following consonant. B. Rama speaks to the horses. So, Rama, the subject of the verb, goes in the nominative. Again, without Santi, Rama. Vadati A more normal word for to speak would be Bahashate, but that's an Atmane Pada verb, so that's why it hasn't been introduced at this early stage. Ramo Vadati Rama speaks to the horses. Put that in the plural, so it becomes So the Ashva is a horse. Accusative plural becomes 
Ashwan. So Rama Ashvan Vadati. Now you know what happens to a uh, followed by a word beginning with a short a. Uh. The whole lot just becomes o. So Ramo Shvan Vadati. And as we know in transliteration, that will often be written as an o with an apostrophe, the apostrophe to represent the lost a. Uh. So Ramo Shvan Vadati. And the N, final N followed by V, will remain unchanged. So, Ramo Shvan Vadati. Sentence C. The sun goes to the horse and stands. So, the sun, that's Putra. So, on its own, nominative singular Putra goes to the horse, you say, to the horse goes, that would be, you have Ashwa is horse, but we put it in the accusative, accusative of motion goes to the horse is Ashvam, Ashvam, Gachati, and stands. So remember from the, the root sta, it's a reduplicating verb of the first class, so it's not stati but tishtati. So he stands. Gachati. Tishtati. Cha. Applying sandhi, right, so putra ashvam, the a ah followed by the short a ah, as usual becomes o. Final m followed by a consonant becomes anuswara, that becomes putro shvangachati tishtaticha. Putro shvangachati tishtaticha. The sentence D, elephants do not remember. Right, so gaja, elephants, gaja. The singular is gaja, singular gaja, plural gaja. Na smaranti, gaja na smaranti. Now apply Sandhi here. Long A followed by a voice consonant. The Visarga oops, disappears. So Gaja Nasmaranti. Elephants do not remember. Sentence E Where are the horses standing? Uh, in Sanskrit, it would be no, most normal to say the horses where they stand. Mm -hmm. So, the horses is Ashva, Ashva, singular, Ashva, plural, Ashva, Kutra, Hwa, Tishtanti, remember in the previous, on the previous page, in the singular tishtati, in the plural that becomes tishtanti. So ashva kutra tishtanti. Literally, the horses where they stand. Now, santi, nothing to be changed here. Because we get the a ah, long a ah with visarga followed by an unvoiced consonant in the ka varga, so it remains unchanged. Ashva kutra tishtanti. Again, word ending in a vowel, following word beginning in a consonant, no change. It would be equally correct if 
she was saying you know, where the horse is standing, to put the um, kutra, you can put the kutra first, where the horse is standing. That would be without santi now, that becomes kutra ashva tishtanti. And what would happen here with santi? You get the word ends in a short a, the following word begins in a short a, and the same would apply whether these a are long or short. So that merges into a long a. So kutrashva tishtanti. Now, visarga followed by a dental t. And that becomes an S. So this now becomes Kutrashvastishtanti. Remember, as we had Namah, homage, Namaste. So it would be Kutrashvastishtanti. I'll write it for you correctly here. Yeah? Kutrashvast. You will often see an A ah in this position here, which is a merger of two vowels, merger of A ah plus A ah to make A. Ah. You will often see it written in transliteration, oops, like as a circumflex, like that. And some people write like that, sometimes, some, sometimes like that. If you see it written with a circumflex, that's just to assist the reader. And this simply represents the, the merger of, of two vowels. It's not done in the De Devanagari script. So the Devanagari script would simply write that as a long R without this additional bit of help. The transliteration can give us in telling us that it's a merger of two vowels, kutra ashvas, kutra ashvas. The sentence F, where is the elephant? Elephant. So, gajah, the elephant, where kutra bhavati is, kutra tishtati, where is he standing? So, gajah. The, the elephant where stands or where is Gajah Kutra Bhavati Sandhi no change to be made Ah the Visarga followed by a hard consonant of the Kavarga of Ka itself no change and Kutra Bhavati no change ends in a vowel next word begins in a consonant Sentence G, Rama speaks and the son remembers. So, Rama Vatati and the son remembers. That's Putra. Son and Putracha Smarati The Santi Let's apply the Santi now Ah before a voiced consonant the V becomes Ramu Vadati And the visarga that had before a ch changes to be articulated at the same point of articulation as the ch, as a palatal, therefore it becomes putrascha. So putrascha. Putrascha. So this now with 
application of Sandhi is Ramu Vadati Putrascha Smarati. Sentence H They stand or they go. So they stand Tishtanti or they go Gachanti va. So we say go or or they go. Tishtanti Gachanti va. Just as you can repeat the cha and put it twice, equally you can repeat the va. So it's equally correct to say they, they stay, they, they stand, or they go. Tishtanti Gachanti va. Correct. Also, Tishtanti va Gachanti va. Va in here, also correct. And in neither of those two cases will there be any Sandhi rule to apply. The sentence I Where does Rama stand? Say Rama is the subject, nominative Rama. Rama, where stands? Rama, Kutra, he stands Tishtati. So Rama, Kutra, Tishtati. No Sandhi to be applied. The Ah before the Ka remains unchanged. Rama, Kutra, Tishtati. You could swap the positions of Rama and Kutra like this, you could say Kutra Ramatishtati, but then there would be Sandhi to be applied. So Kutra Rama Tishtati. Now the Visarga before the dental T changes to an S, as in our Namaste rule. So, Kutra Ramas Tishtati. To say Rama Kutra Tishtati and Kutra Rama Ramas Tishtati are both e equally correct. Sentence J Rama, or the sun goes. So, Rama. I'm leaving a space here because we've got an optional extra var. Rama or the sun So Putrahava Gachati. Now using just one va Rama Putrahava no from Rama to Putra no Santi to be applied um of Unvoiced consonant of the pa varga, it remains that it is Rama put, but putrahava, of course, the a becomes o. Rama putrova gachati. And equally, if we inserted a va here after the, so in other words, we're saying va twice, then the same rule would apply that a would become o. So it would become Ramova Putrova Gachati. So Rama Putrova Gachati or Ramova Putrova Gachati. Sentence K Rama and the sun go. Right? So we've got Rama. Putra, without Santi Putra Cha Now how are we going to say go? Remember we're talking here about two people, so we have to use the dual form of the verb. So it would be wrong to say Rama 
putrasya gachati, singular, wrong. Equally, it would be wrong to say rama putrasya gachanti, that's plural. It has to be dual. So it's rama putrasya dual form gachata. And the sandhi from Rama Putraha, no sandhi to be applied there, remains the same. But from ah to the cha, of course, that becomes sh. So Putrash, Rama Putrascha, Gachata, Rama and the sun go. We now move on to exercise 6 uh, at the top of page 38. As before, I'll read them without the sandhi and then with sandhi. Narau putram vadata Narau putram vadata and now with Sandhi, Narau Putram Badata. Narau Putram Badata. Notice the difference between the two. If you're saying Putram in isolation without any Sandhi, just pronouncing it as an ordinary M, Putram, but with semi vowel, the V following, it becomes more of just a nasal vowel. Naram Putram Badata. So, Narau, the dual, the two men, and of course with the verb in the dual, Vadatta, the two men speak to the sun. Narau Putram Vadatta, the two men speak to the sun. Sentence B Kutra Ashva Cha Gaja Cha Gachanti Kutra Ashvahacha Kajahacha Gachanti. The Kutrahua Ashvahacha Kajahacha, the horses and the elephants, Gachanti. So, where are the horses and the elephants going? Now, applying Sandhi to this one, I'll write it out for you without Sandhi. Kutra Ahvasha. Gajacha Gachanti So there are three instances of Sandhi in this sentence. Firstly, the final A of Kutra and the initial A of Ashba, they merge to become a long A. The visarga before the unvoiced palatal becomes a sh, and equally visarga before the unvoiced palatal here becomes sh. So I won't write the whole thing out in full, but it becomes kutrashvashchagajacha gachanti. Kutrashvashagajashagachanti. Sentence C. Ashva mriga va gachati. Means either the horse or the deer is going. Ashva mriga va or the deer gachati. With and without santi. Was it without santi to start with? Ashva. Mrigahva Gachati. Note the verb here is in the singular because it's not two subjects that are doing it, it's one or the other. Because it's one or the other, therefore only one of them is actually going to be the subject of the verb. So Ashva Mrigahva Gachati in the singular. 
applying sandhi. Well, you know the rule well enough now. Ah, followed by this voice consonant becomes o, and exactly the same here. So it becomes ashvo mrigova gachati. Ashvo mrigo va gachati. Sentence D. <coughs> Rama putrau vadati. Rama putrau vadati. So, Rama in the nominative is the subject of the sentence. Rama vadati. Rama speaks. Putrau. Dual. To the two sons. Now, a further reminder here on the pronunciation of the Visarga. If you, as I just did then, if you read out the sentence very, very slowly and carefully, sorry, I knocked my camera offline, sorry about that. If you read out that sentence out very slowly and carefully, <clears throat> you will probably pronounce Rama as if it were in isolation. Rama putrau vadati. In running speech, you wouldn't get that shadow ah. It would wouldn't be Ramaha Putrau, but just Ramaha Putrau Vadati. So on its own, in isolation or at the end of a sentence, Ramaha, Ramaha. In running speech followed by pa, Ramaha Putrau Vadati. Ramaha Pu, not Ramaha Pu, but Ramaha Pu, Ramaha Putrau Vadati. And Rama speaks to the, the two boys. Sentence E. Mriga Ashvaha Gajja Cha Gachanti Mriga Ashvaha Gajja Cha Gachanti. So the Mriga, the deer, Ashva, the horse, Gajja Cha, and the elephant go Gachanti verb there in the plural because we have three subjects of that verb. So writing it now without Sandhi. Mriga Ashva Kaja Cha Gachanti Now, applying Sandhi. But I just put this in as an aside. I hope you've all got it by now when I say not applying Sandhi and applying Sandhi. In an ordinary written Sanskrit, you always apply Sandhi and it's wrong not to. The only reason it's not being applied in, in these textbook exercises is basically to make it easier for the student. So you first of all see these words in isolation. They say, ah, I know that one, I know that one. And then you apply the Sandhi rules to merge them together into running speech. So the sentences I've just written it here, mriga, ashva, gaja, cha, gachanti, is actually, you, you would not see that in running Sanskrit. It would simply be wrong. You would have to apply the Sandhi. Always apply the Sandhi. So the ah, uh, Followed by the word beginning with a, that becomes o. Write it with an o apostrophe because this a drops. Ashva with the a again, followed by a voiced consonant that becomes o. Visarga followed by <coughs> the unvoiced cha, the unvoiced palatal that becomes sh ch, sh. Gachanti and remains unchanged. So this becomes then applying the rules of Sandhi. Mrigosh vo Mrigosh vo 
gajascha gachanti. That is how it would be said. Mrigosh vo gajascha. Mrigosh vo gajascha gachanti. Sentence F. Putra mrigan nasmaranti. Putra, the sons, na smaranti. So putra and smaranti, the sons remember. Putra na smaranti, the sons do not remember. Putra mriga na smaranti. That's the, the sons do not remember the deer. In the plural, mriga. So writing it first of all without santi. Putra. Mrigan. That's the accusative plural. Mriga. Mrigan. Nasmaranti. They do not remember the deer. And applying Sandhi. So the long A with Visarga Putra followed by the voiced consonant. It just drops the Visarga. So it's putra mrigan nasmaranti. And the n, the an, followed by another n, remains the same. So mrigan nasmaranti. Sentence G. Kutra narau vasata. Kutra narau vasata. So kutra, where? Narau, the two men, Vasata, live, in the duel, third person duel. Kutra Narau, Vasata. Equally correct, as we know, to swap the order of Narau and Kutra, so you can say Narau, Kutra Vasata. The two men, where they live, literally. Narau kutra vasata, kutra narau vasata, equally correct. And sentence H. Oops. Ramam prichami. The subject of the sentence, if we're saying it in English, prichami, I ask. Because the I is inherent in the verb, Prichami, we don't need to say it in Sanskrit, the aham. You'd only say it if you were emphasizing. Like, I have to ask. He knows it already, but I have to ask. There you'd say, they do sah, he knows them. Aham, prichami, I have to ask. But it's just, I'm asking, with no special emphasis, just prichami is enough. Oh, Ramam prichami, I am asking Rama. So Rama, Rama in the nominative, but I'm asking Rama. That means it has to go now into the accusative. So Ramam, Prichami. And because this final M followed by a consonant, it becomes Visarga, so not Visarga, sorry, it becomes Anuswara. But since the following consonant is itself a labial, in other words, <coughs> it's pronounced <coughs> it's pronounced at the same point of articulation, in other words, the same place in the mouth is being used, it doesn't change simply because the comes out at the same place, Ramam Prichami. Therefore, it's written as Anuswara, and the same in the Devanagari script. You see, Ramam on its own would be written like that, Ramam, Ramam Prichami. Be written with the dot instead of the um. So Ramam Prich 
Tommy. Now, top of page 39. Narau Putran Navadatta. Narau Putran Navadatta. So, Narau, the dual form, means the men, the specifically the two men. Vadatta, that ta ending there, characteristic of the third person dual. So, Narau Vadatta, the two men are speaking. Narau Na Vadatta, the two men do not speak or are not speaking. Narau Putran Navadatta. Putran, accusative plural. Navadatta. That is, the two men are not speaking to the sons. Santi, any Santi here? No. Narau Putran, no cause for Santi, vowel followed by consonant. A final N here. The next word begins in an N. It, it remains unchanged. Putran na Vadata, and of course, no Santi from na to Vadata. Sentence J Kutra Mriga Bhavanti. Equally correct to say Mriga. Kutra Bhavanti. Kutra Mriga Bhavanti. Means where Kutra Mriga the deer are. Where are the deer? In the plural, of course. So Kutra Mriga Bhavanti. Applying Sandhi, nothing of course between Kutra and Riga, but with the long ah followed by a voiced consonant drops the visarga. So Kutra Mriga Bhavanti. Kutra Mriga Bhavanti. If you put it the other way around, Mriga Kutra Bhavanti, the Mriga with the visarga would remain unchanged because it would then be followed by an un sorry yeah an unvoiced consonant of the ka varga so ka upa the kutra mriga bhavanti or mriga kutra bhavanti now for section 7 that's the english to sanskrit on page 39 where is Rama going? Firstly, without Sandhi, as always, we have Rama, Rama, nominative. Where is he going? Kutra Gachati. Rama Kutra Gachati. Sandhi rules. No change to be made. Rama Kutra Gachati. No Santi rules to apply here. Rama is going to the horse. Rama is going to the horse. Ashvam Gachati. Now, the important rule to apply here, Rama Ashvam. Ah, with Visarga. Next word begins with a short ah. So that becomes Ramushvangachati. Um, gachati, the M becomes the Anuswara. Because it's followed by a G, then the nasal takes on the same tone, you know, the same quality, I should say. It comes out of the same place, so it's Ashvangachati. Ramushvangachati. 
Ramushpangachati. Sentence C. The sun does not speak to the horses. So, Putraha. Putraha does not speak na vadati to the horses. Ashva, the horse, it's the accusative plural, ashvan. So, Putraha, sorry. Ashvan na vadati. And always the ah followed by ah becomes o. You can write it with an apostrophe. So putroshvan na vadati. Sandhi here, no, just the final n remains unchanged with the next word also beginning with an n. Putran Navadati. Sorry, Ashwan. Putrush Putrushvan Navadati. The two elephants remember the man. So the two elephants Gajau remember. It's not Smarati, that would be singular, and it's not Smaranti, that would be plural, it is Smarata. Dual, the two elephants remember. So Gajau Naram Smarata, like this Gajau Naram Smarata. The, the ta. That's the characteristic third person dual ending. No sandhi between Gajau and Naram, but Naram followed by a consonant that becomes Anuswara. And the, the quality of that sound there, followed by an S, it tends to be pronounced just like a, a nasal, a bit like the French or, or the modern Hindi nasal. It would be pronounced by a northern Indian today as Naran Naran Smarata Naran Smarata not Naran Smarata or Naram Smarata but Naran Naran Smarata in Thailand this final Anuswara sorry pleonasm Anuswara is always final the the, the uh, Anuswara tends to be pronounced always as a ng sound, whatever follows it. So if this were being read by a Thai, he might say Kajo Narang Smarata. Okay, that's normal in Thailand. You hear them, of course, doing it mostly in Pali. Uh, don't follow that rule. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just the way they've done it in Thailand for, for, for a long time. Similar in Burma. Uh, but doing it properly in Sanskrit, Gajo Narang where do the two deer live? So, the two deer, dual, nominative dual, Marigau. Where? Kutra. And to live, Vas. How do we finish the verb? Third person dual. Vasata. So, Marigau Kutra Vasata. Where do the two deer live? Equally correct to say Kutra Marigau Vasata. And for reasons you already know well by now, there is no Santhi to be applied in this sentence. Sentence F. You go to the horse. Let's assume that it's talking about a singular person, singular you. So you don't need to put in the subject because the, the subject, the you, will, will be implied in the form of the verb. As I say, it's, uh, unless it's emphasized, you don't need to say it. Only say it if it's emphasized. So ash, to the horse you go. That's uh, accusative of motion. Ashvam, without Santi now. Ashvam gachati. 
with Sandhi, change the M to Anuswara, and it becomes Ashvangachati, the ng, because of the following G, Ashvangachati. Sorry, I've written Gachati, he goes, of course it's Gachasi, you, you go. Ashvangachasi. Where are we standing? So where, kutra, we, let's assume it's plural, where are we standing? Kutra. Now he is standing. Tishtati. We are standing is Tishtama. So kutra. Kutra tishtamaha. Where are we standing? Kutra tishtamaha. Sentence H. The sun goes to the horses and the elephants. So, sorry, start this too far into the line. So, Putra, the sun, Putra Gachati, with Santi Putro Gachati, the sun goes. So, the sun to the horses, to the elephants, and goes in Sanskrit. So, Putra, now, as before without Santi, to the horses, Ashvan. It's accusative plural, Ashvan. Gajan. Cha. Gachati. Oops. So, Putra Ashvan. Usual rule, ah, followed by ah, becomes o. Ashvan gajancha. Is there any change from the final n to the g? Actually, there's not. If this were an uswara, it would be, it would become a n sound following with the g following. So he goes to the horse, and the elephants would be Ashvangajancha. Does the N change its quality with the following G? No, it doesn't. It remains as a pure N. So it would be correctly pronounced as Putroshvangajancha. Now, where you have a word ending in a full N, not anuswara, but a full consonantal N, and it's followed by an unvoiced palatal, a ch or a ch. What happens is that it adds a sh to it. So this gajancha becomes gajascha and the N becomes the anuswara. So, so and to the elephants then becomes gajascha. There is a theory that in a very ancient stage of the language, this ending, this um, masculine plural accusative ending, an an, had an s at the end of it. In the very, very old language, entirely, dis <coughs> sorry, entirely disappeared from Sanskrit. <coughs> Apart from this one case where it comes back because of the following palatal. 
because it, be, it can be pronounced e easily there, and it's easy for it to, to come back. Whether there's anything in that theory is, uh, is difficult to, to say. There is an alternative theory, more plausible in my view, because in early Vedic, you the N followed by ch only has the unsh sound when it is actually in cases where it can be proved it's a particular form that did previously finish with an, an ns um, but that this rule now has become generalized so any any word ending in a n whether in the ancient language it was followed by an s or not inserts an s here um, don't strain your brains too hard trying to learn this by heart now. You'll be seeing plenty of instances of it, and it'll become natural to you. So, to read the sentence now, the sun goes to the horses and the elephants. It's Putrashvan Gajash Chagachati. That's Putra Ashvan Gajan Chagachati. Putrashvan Gajash Chagachati. You are all speaking to the elephant, sentence I. You are all, just written in this way here, to indicate that it's the plural. So, sorry. Sorry, I've got my right margin stuck here. I don't know how to get rid of it yet. So, you're all speaking to the elephant, plural. So, this is done by the use of just two words in Sanskrit. So elephant put in the accusative to indicate being spoken to, and the verb to speak, vad, in the second person plural to indicate you, plural, you three or more are speaking. So that becomes, without santi, gajam, vadata. That's the second plural, just ending in a ta. So to the elephant, you speak. Santi, I'll just subdot the M. The final M becomes an uswara before the consonant. And finally, the elephant does not remember. Gaja. Asmarati. Gajah na smarati. And with sandhi, ah, before the voiced consonant becomes o. Oh. So it's the elephant does not remember is gajo na smarati. You can turn it the other way around. You can actually put the verb first, in which case it would be slightly emphasized that it's the elephant who's not remembering that would be nasmarati gaja then of course becomes gaja now not gajo because it's standing at the end of a sentence or word group so you can say gajo nasmarati or nasmarati gaja i'll now briefly run through that's the end of the exercises i'll briefly run through the the summary sheet on page 40 so we've got the the paradigm of the, the present tense of the verb, a first class verb, class one verb. As normal, I'll read across, as we say, third third person, then second person, then first person, singular, dual, plural. So gachati, gachata, gachanti, gachasi, gachataha, gachata. First person, gachami, gachavaha, gachamaha. And as before, remember that in the for the, the third and second persons, the he and the you, it's a short ah in that ending, ati, ata, anti, ati, ata, ata, and ata. But that's lengthened, that ah is lengthened in the first person of the singular, the dual, and the plural, gachami, gachavaha. Chamaha. And the verb roots that we've encountered with you know, their, their present um, stem, so gum, gachati, prach, 
पृछति भू भवति तो बी वद वदति वस वसति स्था तिष्ठति स्मृ स्मरति and the noun nara declining for the uh, singular dual and plural in the nominative and the accusative is nara narau nara and in the accusative naram narau naran and that the nouns we've come across the ashwaha gajaha naraha putraha mrigaha and the name rama the indeclinables kutra cha na and va kutra hua cha and na not va or right that concludes uh, lesson 4b